This is just going to be a quick video on how to unbox a new bike and get it built up and ready to ride in the trails. So first off, we're just going to get rid of these two straps here, grabbing a pair of wire cutters or scissors, just giving them a snip. Next is going to be a few staples along the box. You're going to be careful, they are quite sharp in your hand, so just watch out where the staples are and just undo the box like this. So the bike will come mostly all um, cable tied together, so you should be able to slide the whole thing out in one go and just set it aside. So in the box, got our two pedals, also got our front and rear reflector, little bell, and a little set of tools. That's all you need to put this back together. We've also got our information as well. So next up, we're gonna start snipping off all these cable ties that are holding the wheels and things together and the seat posts and everything on. Uh, and you wanna be careful not to cut through any of the brake cables or the gear cables whilst you do this. And after you've taken all those cable ties off, the front wheel should just slide away and you can set that aside again as well. So next we're going to start taking off all the bits of cardboard and foam and packaging that we think is going to get in our way. Things like this that are on just frame and tubing, you can leave there for now just to stop it getting scratched whilst you're taking it all apart. So I'm going to start off by taking off the cardboard and packaging over the stem and also taking the packaging off the handlebars. So the first part we're going to put on the bike is the seat and seat post. Just taking out this little cap here, loosening off the lever. So we're just going to slide the seat post straight in to a reasonable height and tighten that up for now. So for this particular stem, we're going to need a six millimeter Allen key. And we're just going to loosen off the four stem face bolts all the way. So making sure everything's up the right way it should be, so levers the right way around, all the cables, sh you should be able to see them going smoothly to where they need to go. You're just going to place the handlebars into the main body of the stem like that. And then taking the stem face plate with one of the bolts in it, place it on top, get your Allen key and just tighten it back up again. Then just taking all the rest of the bolts, putting them in nice and loosely, getting everything in place. Once all the bolts are in loosely, you just want to double check that there's equal spacing at the top and bottom of the stem. And then tighten up the bolts in a diagonal pattern. So going from the first to the fourth, to the second, to the third bolts. And just keep going around bit by bit. And if you've got a torque wrench, you want to tighten this up to between four and six Newton meters. So I'm just going around bit by bit, making sure it's nice and equal. on each of the bolts. So next up, we're gonna get the front wheel ready to put in the bike. Each of the wheels will have two of these rubber caps on either end, that's just to protect it whilst it's in the box. And get rid of those. And you're gonna take a little cardboard box of parts. And we're gonna grab a little quick release skewer from under that bag. Before we put the skewer into the front wheel, we're just going to take off the end cap here and slide off one of the springs. Then you're just going to take a little bit of grease, apply a little bit of grease to the threads. And then slide that in. And if you've got a disc brake, slide it in from the disc side. Place on the spring, small end first. and tighten it in place. So that's the front wheel ready to go on the bike. So we're gonna take the packaging off the front of the forks now. And take out the little plastic part there. So if it's a disc brake, it'll come with a little spacer. Just gonna remove that. It's worthwhile keeping those if you're ever traveling with your bike. Um, it's quite handy to put those in the brake when you take your front wheel out when you're putting it in the car. So keep that in a safe place. And you're just going to lift the bike up and slide it on top of the front wheel like that. 
trying to get the disc in line with the brake pads. Just like that. And then you're just going to tighten up the quick release skewer. So it's nice and snug, facing upwards like that. So once the front wheel is in, you can lift up the handlebars, give it a quick spin and it should spin nice and freely. So once the bike's pretty much fully built, you're going to go ahead and take off the rest of the packaging that we had left on. Once you've got all the packaging removed, you take off the two little plastic end caps as well. The last part to put on is the pedals. If you don't have a bike stand, the easiest way to do this is to just flip the bike upside down. It's best just to protect the handlebars as well when you're doing this. So you're just going to flip it upside down, resting it on the saddle and the handlebars, like that. So we're just going to get our pedals out of the packaging. And you need to identify which one is the right and which one is the left pedal. In this case, it's quite a simple. One has L, one has R on it. So we're going to start with the right one. So we're going to apply a bit of grease to the threads of these. Give it a wipe around. Grab our pedal spanner. We're going to go to the right side of the bike. Always in these bicycles, the, uh, the right side is the drive side, so the side with the gears and the chain on it. And this is a regular thread, so it's using the normal righty tidy lefty loosey method. We're just going to get the couple of, first couple of threads with our fingertips, and then you're just going to set the pedal spanner on it. Pedaling it backwards will slowly tighten it up until you feel it biting. Just apply a small amount of pressure to it. So same again with the left pedal, applying a little bit of grease. This time, however, we want to be careful with the threads. It's a reverse thread, so we're going to go with a lefty tidy method. And again, pedaling it backwards will slowly tighten up the pedal. So that's our bike fully assembled. There's a few things we're going to check now before we're going to go and ride it. We're going to do what's called an M check, going through the whole bike, making sure it's all good to go. So we're going to make a figure of an M on the bike. Going to start at the front wheel, work our way up to the stem and handlebars, down to the crank set and pedals, back up to the seat, and down to the rear wheel again. And there's a few things we're going to check on each of those components. So the first thing we're going to check on the front wheel is the quick release skewer. We're going to make sure the lever is nice and tight and you can see it's pointing directly upwards out of the way. It's not going to hit, get hit by any rocks or anything. And then we're just going to firmly grab the top of the tyre and rock it back and forth and there shouldn't be any wobbling or any knocking noises coming from the front wheel. And it should spin nice and freely like that as well. So working our way up to our stem and handlebars then, we're going to grab our front brake and put your whole hand around the headset. We're going to rock it back and forth and there shouldn't be any movement in the headset here. So I can feel a small amount of movement here. What we're going to do is take our six millimeter Allen key, loosen the two pinch bolts at the side, grab our five millimeter Allen key and tighten up the top bolt. This doesn't need to be too tight, just so much that it stops that little bit of play from happening. And a little bit tighter, and that's good to go. I'm going to grab our 6mm Allen key again, make sure our handlebars are nice and straight this time with the front wheel, and tighten the pinch bolts back up again. So moving down to the pedals and cranks then, we're just going to grab one of the crank arms, nice and firmly and try and rock it side to side and there shouldn't be any movement, movement or play in there. This is good to go and the pedals should spin nice and freely each and you should be able to pedal it nice and smoothly. Up to the saddle then, what we're going to do, take our two hands on it, try and rock it back and forth and there shouldn't be any movement here either 
And then using your knees to clamp your rear wheel, you shouldn't be able to move your seat whilst the seat clamp is locked up. So what I'm gonna do, open the lever on the seat clamp, tighten up the nut at the other side, and give it another tighten again. And I shouldn't be able to move it side to side with a large amount of force. Lastly, moving down to the rear wheel, similarly to the front, we're just gonna check that the axle's nice and tight. I'm gonna grab the tire, rock it side to side, and ensure there's no free movement in it. Give it a spin and it should run nice and freely. Lastly, before we go out riding, we're just going to check the tyre pressures. So depending on your riding style in the train, you're going to be riding, you're going to be running different tyre pressures. Um, on most tyres, though, they'll have a recommended pressure setting. Uh, so we're just going to go halfway between that now. So that's our new bike built up and ready to ride. It's worthwhile doing the M-check before you go on each ride, just to make sure it is as it should be. Thanks for watching.